Welcome in to the DNVR Rapids Podcast, presented, of course, by the homies at Ibaka TV. I'm your host, Mitchell Carroll, and I am joined, as always, by super producer Yaya on the ones and twos, the superest of producers, and two esteemed guests tonight, esteemed guests. Uh, Except right for here. Joseph. <laughs> yeah, one esteemed Speaking guest. of the questionable and esteemed who... guest, uh, Joseph Samuelson, welcome aboard. Thank you, I appreciate it. And Jared Geisler, welcome in. Glad to be here. Of course. Uh, Jared, of course, uh, with the C38 podcast. Joseph writes all sorts of stuff. His Twitter feed is just a dearth of knowledge of the MLS and the Rapids. Thank so you. follow along, it. check out his articles. You can find them all on his Twitter page. JSPC JSP SAM SAM there you, you got go it. I was close uh, there you go guys welcome in uh, we are staring at the quarter season mark here of the MLS season um, Rapids a uh, lot of news going on with the Rapids in the last couple weeks uh, unfortunately the on-field stuff hasn't been uh, desirable you could say uh, but we're gonna less dig than in. desirable yeah. <laughs> one say. so we're gonna dig into the Charlotte game a little bit uh, we're gonna talk about the Timbers game coming up a little bit uh, we will hit Zardas talk, of course, have to. Um, and then Yaya's got a little game for us. He's going to throw some stuff at us and, and, and a little rapid fire and, and see where we're thinking. Um, and we're just, you know, going to do a little uh, bigger view. You know, we are about 25% of the way through the season, give or take. I think we have to take a, a high view of the team right now because yes. if you get too granular, it gets a, it gets a little it's tough. dire. Yeah, it is. So let's, let's, let's just go straight to the game. Uh, from last week, nil nil draw with Charlotte. Um, best thing you can say was Yarbrough was awesome. There we go. Um, and uh, he made the MLS team of the week because of that. Had that sweet stretch of saves where it was uh, about three shots immediately on him. Listen, it was so great to see Yarbrough have a great game again because, like, for anybody who watched the. Uh, the games in uh, Dallas and Minnesota, like, or in like going all the way back to that uh, that howler that he let in against in Houston, yep. uh, like to oh, start yeah, the yeah, five yeah. game stretch, right? It's kind of felt like Yarbrough's like regressed to the mean after like how mm-hmm. great his twenty twenty one was, uh, but it was awesome to see him finally have just like a like I don't honestly like game of the season like caliber yeah, game for sure. Um, he was the reason why the Rapids. Uh, drew that game and uh, hats off to the five saves I think he made. Yeah, it's kind of tough. It feels like we need a shutout from Yarbrough to to get a point these days. So um, I think we've put a lot of pressure on the young man. And um, like you said, revert to the mean maybe a little bit. But for me, still still a a very good player. Uh, Didn't have a great road trip, but he's one that I think we can count on to bounce back. We just got to score some goals. Uh, we can't count on a shutout week in, week no, out. Absolutely 100%. not. Um, and I think one of the other big notes, obviously, the Zardis debut is huge. But a weird weird starting 11. And the 11 got even weirder when uh, Jack Price uh, was out with injury. Um, Joseph, you're, you definitely get into the nitty gritty there. Was it a surprise to see that 11 come out? It wasn't a surprise to see Wilson not make a start. Sure. Because he wasn't even included um, on the sheet, though he wasn't even available. Yeah, the yeah, because he wasn't he wasn't available last week. He's been in and out with that hamstring injury. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't surprising to see somebody else uh, sort of fill in for him. Um, it was a surprise to hear that Moore uh, picked up apparently a training injury uh, sometime late last week. Okay, uh, which is why he couldn't fill in. Um, instead, we got the first st- start for Gustavo Viasia. Yeah, I was personally expecting that if Wilson couldn't go, they would do something like move uh, Abubakar to the center, Rosenberry right center back, um, and then Beta Shore and Estevez as wing backs. But turns out Estevez couldn't go. Yeah, uh, or c- couldn't start that game either because he's still working his way back to 90 minutes fit. Sure. Um, so yeah, just like they had to do all sorts of shuffling because of uh, uh, just injuries that have been picked up in the last few weeks. Um, and you know, also surprise, kind of a surprise that, you know, Max hasn't been able to also to crack it. like yeah. consistently crack the 11. Yeah. Uh, it was very weird. Um, and then of course we, we kind of touched on this earlier, at least started to talk about it, but Warner coming in for price when he came off, where are your feelings on that Jared? And it seemed like an odd choice considering Acosta sitting there and hasn't really featured at all. I don't know where your thoughts are, who you thought could have been in instead, or if you were cool with the Warner sub. 
I think Warner is a, a necessary player at this point because we don't have a lot of players that play center of the park. Right. Um, you right. know, we we don't have Cole Bassett to to lean on who can produce goals and play um, you know very attacking style from the center of midfield. Um, so when Price goes down and it could be out this weekend as well. Um, I'm not sure where you turn if not Warner because you have to have someone to partner in the middle of the park with Mark Anthony K. So right. um, I, I think a bit of a tough situation, but we've played a lot of games in the last seven or eight months. Um, a condensed season this year will not lend itself to any less injury. So right, um, th right. these are things that every team's going to have to work through. Um, just unfortunate for the Rapids right now that you look at Wilson and Price, who are two pieces of the very core spine of the team. Um, who may not be able to go this weekend against a tough Portland team. I think you could also argue that like last year that the Rapids got really lucky with how few players actually went out for like long-term injuries. Obviously Rubio had a bit of a knock that kept him out for a handful of weeks in the middle of the year. Um, I think Wilson was out here and there for a, a few on a few occasions, but nominally being the big, yeah, no, nominally the big was like loss. the big one, but like the, the based on like how we were expecting, you know, or how, how, how well the Rapids played without Nomley. I guess it was, mm -hmm. I guess it was under, I guess it was, uh, it wasn't like they were missing him dreadfully, right? It wasn't as big as a miss as like losing someone like Price would be. Um, and that's centrally like my biggest question for this weekend yeah. is can Jack Price go? And if not, what is the best thing for the team to do to fill it in, fill, fill in for him? Because it's really just a cost and Warner as options because you go down to Rapids too. Philip Mayock is more of a box to box player. He's yeah. not really like that deep lying mm -hmm. uh, control I mean, possession and like pivot player in the middle. Um, why? Oh, the <laughs> buff for BCS. Why do the Rapids treat the injury report like an NHL team in the playoffs? Yeah, because because Wilson wasn't even listed the last two weeks yeah. with an injury, and he wasn't even available off the bench, let alone starting. Moore wasn't listed, um, and he ended up yeah. being uh, Lucas out wasn't of the team. listed, and he. What was, do you have to gain by the disclosure? Um, I don't know. Playing it a little Good close to the chest. Relations? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that's one thing. But um, it's also shout out I, the Rapids media department, though they're tough type. to plan yeah. for. We. we we that's don't true. we don't know who's going to be there and who's not, and yeah. that's down to um, the the insiders and the the supporters yeah. group. We're not sure who the Rapids are going to field week in week out right now. Yeah. It's been very tight lipped. Frazier is definitely trying to play some chess there, I think, um, and maybe. And I, I this is something I've been kind of thinking up, haven't really brought it on, but I think he might not need to play as much chess, and maybe should just play some checkers. I think he might be overthinking some of these decisions. Is that? Are you thinking tactically, or are you thinking like? Are think, you actually talking about like injury report related? No, stuff? no. And I think I'm thinking more on a big scale. I think he is. I think he's. He got that extension. He got the players we wanted. Players coming in, made some moves, made some trades, and they're on a bit of a, a bit. They're on a long streak of needing to play better soccer, <laughs> needing results, and all of a sudden you look at this game and it's like. Uh, what, where did that 11 come from, right? Like, why, like, if Certainly you're not listening disjointed. to anything, yeah, it just didn't make a ton of sense. And I'm wondering if he's now trying to throw things at the wall instead of stick to what's consistent. I think so, the biggest problem that the Rapids have just generally had is that they haven't seen great play from the wingers. Yeah. Like, uh, no matter who has been put in those, like, attacking midfield roles behind whatever striker you choose, yeah. um, like Lewis, Barrios, Max, uh, yeah, who, it's been tough. who am I missing? Um, I mean, Mesquita, Shinyashiki, when they play in those positions, we haven't seen incredible performances. Yeah. Uh, so one yeah. of the big things I that Mitch just kind of saying that I brought to my head, do you think after the extension, Frazier is like more com like has more confidence and can like a little bit more free? Or do you think he's like tightened up more and is like, I don't want to lose this. I want to keep going. I think it's a freedom thing in that he's like, oh, I'm locked in. This is my team. This is my squad. Watch me manage the shit out of this right here. I would and agree. I think that he's thinking long term and he, yeah. he's going to put players like Viasia. Not surprising to see love him. that start. You know, I actually I, really liked that. I would much rather see Viasia than Drew Moore. Huge Drew Moore fan. I love yeah. Drew Moore, but um, Viasia is going to be a player that can be a significant piece of this team for for the future. Um, would not be the least bit surprised to see Zardes getting instant minutes. Um, oh, yeah. But 
Um, these are players that, that kind of fit the long-term view, and I, I do think that it, it, it does come from freedom. We're not tied to immediate results because there is a long-term contract, but yeah. um, we, we do need to see a quick turnaround in form or else this season is is teetering on the brink. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to touch on Vicey, and then we'll kind of get into the bigger picture stuff in terms of like where the season's at and all that. But I really liked that Vicey debut. Athletically speaking, looking at him. I thought he had a good game too. He looked really good. And especially when the back line kind of lined up with the with the press box, he's huge. Big. He is makes a booboo car look massive. small. Massive. He's athletic. Yeah. Clearly doesn't have he's still a little raw, I think. He needs to kind of just clean up some touches and some some stuff like that. But for the most part, I thought he played pretty well, played in formation. Um you know, and, and I and I totally agree with Jared saying that. Um, like, I'd love to. I love to see more minutes from Viasia. Yeah, and I could actually hear an argument saying that it would be good to get Viasia minutes over Trusty at times yep. because, yep. I mean, Trusty's already sold, right? Um, he's gonna leave in what uh, J- July seventeenth, I believe, is clock's like his. ticking. Yeah, the clock's ticking, right? And so, the. Convi- uh, Hold on, buff for BCS. Convince me Gustavo Vicia isn't FC Cincy okay. trash. The number one thing I want to <laughs> say to that is I talked to, I want to say like 10 different FC Cincinnati fans about their season last year. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them said that Vicia was not the problem with their defense. Their defense had loads of issues last year uh, down to coaching, uh, the other personnel that was there, but nobody had a negative thing to say about Viasia. And this is this is coming from a fan base that has almost nothing but negative things to say sure. from and the look, last like two years. Viasia is like the golden handle to their wooden spoon. <laughs> like that's that. how I would put that. Yeah, I love that. That's really how I would. I thought it was, it was the one bright spot, the one part that actually played well. <laughs> But for and BCS, man, good players do play on bad teams. Yeah, that does have right. listen, Good like, prospects come from bad the Rapids programs. have done enough in the MLS market in pulling in underutilized or undervalued talent that I'm willing to like like give, I guess, um, like uh, to wait for the long term uh, to see like how Viasia develops before like passing too much judgment off the off the top. Yeah, look, I mean, I don't think it was that crazy of a move in terms of. I mean, it was probably a little. Why did they expensive. let him go? They they did like pay the Rapids did have to put up like quite a bit of money. It's I also think 1. It's like 800. Total, I think it was 800 total, but including the amount that they had to pay to right, pay right. off his. Yeah, I mean, they paid they paid yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, um, like I think, it wasn't a cheap acquisition. And, and also, also, since they needed a U twenty two slot and uh, like for one of their one of their upcoming signings, so. And also, I'm, you got to look at it. It's part of the old, old the old uh, management. It's not he was brought in by like one of the older guy, the old gym, not the new gym as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's another move. I see that. Maybe yeah. he just didn't fit what he wanted for this team. Yeah, look, and I, you know, uh, I'd say trust in Porg right now. I mean, he is he's he's finding guys. His that other, track record is yeah. good enough that yeah, absolutely. I'm willing to like give it, like cut him. I mean, not, it's not that I'm cutting him slack because I do think Viasia is a good sure. player. Yeah. But I'm willing to wait and see. I guess. Absolutely. And with yeah. Viasia, you're talking about a big player, uh, big. big international future ahead of the player. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think this is a lot better signing than take, for instance, someone from the MLS draft. Um, Ab- th- this absolutely. is a player that's much more polished, much more MLS ready. Um, so I, I don't I don't see a lot of angles to take where Vias is a bad signing, especially with Trusty departing Absolutely. very soon. He played every single minute of the under seventeen World Cup to a team that played in the third place game, so as many minutes as anyone could possibly play, he played. Um, he he has a ton of experience, clearly on an athletic level with anybody in the MLS just by watching, just like seeing him in. Per- He's one of those players that you see in person, and I mean I'm obviously an NBA guy, so I always go to this one, but. You think of a guy like Rudy Gobert who's good and defensive, but then you see him in person and his shoulders are as wide as that couch, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, okay, I get it, right? And right. seeing Viasia play last uh, last weekend was like, oh, I, okay, I see what, like, I see it. Like, that's like... I could hear the argument that Viasia might not be a great signing if he had a terrible game last week. But sure. The, but he had a great... I mean, I, I would say he had an above-average game last week. Uh, right. Like, I wouldn't call it, like, a man-of-the-match performance because that went... I would have given that to Yarbrough. Uh, right. But I think, I think he still had a very good game. He was yep. a crucial reason behind that clean sheet, so... Sure. Yeah, and then of course, you know, we we should talk about it. Obviously, um, we had a me and Yaya did our emergency pod uh, for the trade on Friday, but the trade happened, right? They br- Rapids bring in distressed asset from Columbus, kind Classic. of out of their picture, 
um, in Jossie Zardes, U.S. Men's National Team striker, who for Columbus was a half a goal a game striker in the MLS. Um, you can't really ask for much more in terms of acquiring a striker. Um, I think personality and work weight rise really fits in with what Frazier wants to do, with what Borg's looking for, um, and kind of fills the hole that we see complained about in the comment section and on Reddit and on Twitter <laughs> and talking to people at the C38 tailgate and all of that. Right. So, um, Jared hit me with your, like what you thought initially, uh, initially, and then after watching him kind of play 30 plus minutes, 35 minutes, almost what you, how you're feeling going into a big match against Portland with him in the roster. Yeah. Charlotte aside, because I don't think that's fair. I don't even think he'd seen the training session with the nope. Rapids as of yeah, yet. Not, yeah. So um, we're going to set that aside because it was the entire game was disjointed. We didn't yes. see a shot on target. I'm not going to judge a player on that. Brutal. Um, he did complete 100% of his passes. Hey, I mean, you can't get much higher than that. Sure. Yeah, like you can't. And uh, <laughs> this is a player that we all we all know very, very well. And I think that that kind of uh, poisons the well a little bit sure. when you look at fan reaction, because um, if you look at the, the profile of the player, Player, six foot two, six foot three inches tall, uh, number nine, half a goal a game striker. This is exactly the profile of player that we've all been crying out for. Absolutely. Um, I think the only thing that, that does poison the well a little bit is his familiarity in MLS and for the U.S. national team, where results have been somewhat mixed. But for, for me, I think, uh, especially with a incentive laden contract and, and expenditure oh, yeah. on the player, um, we'll be more than happy for him to, to max out those those it, incentives. It's a golden win boot. Win the golden boot. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's literally no <laughs> downsides to the deal yeah uh, because most all the money kicks in if he turns out to be a good player and if he's a bad player 300k in gamma is not a is like is like that's pennies Nothing. that's pennies like that's yeah that's like uh that's two international slots it is another killer move by Porg. Yeah, honestly, no, looks and great on paper, and this is a, a checkers move. Yeah. This, is, this is a move that <laughs> just a makes a lot of sense. Yeah, if you just have any cursory understanding yes. of the Rapids team last year, you knew we needed a nine. Then you look around the league and you look at at teams that might be willing to deal an asset like that. Zardes come, came right to the top of the the pool there. So I think, yeah, and that was those were rumors, uh, kind of right during preseason and the lead up, and during the first couple weeks. Um, you know, he has featured for Columbus. He he scored a penalty in their last U.S. Open Cup game uh, in the loss, actually, to Detroit. Um, and so he wasn't completely out, but you could tell that in terms of their future and their season going forward, he wasn't going to be the nine, right? That's right. And so, if your team looking for the nine, right? The guy to come in and be the main target guy, be the guy that's going to put in the goals. Uh, it just made too much sense. Yeah. Right. And um, like the only like big question that really comes from Zardes is like, what do you do with Rubio? We saw like we, we shouldn't, I don't think we should take too much from the Charlotte game because sure. um, when like, you know, because as Jared said, uh, it was a weird he, game. He, it was a weird game and Zardes didn't actually get a, you know, any training sessions really before right. the, aside from like the pre-match warmup. Right. right. Um, but when Zardes came on, Rubio shifted over to the left. They mm -hmm. did keep that three, four, three. I think a lot of people were, uh, I guess, uh, speculating that the, that Frazier would, I guess, bring back the, the three, four or the three, five, two. Right. Um, that we saw down the stretch a lot last season. Um, I think ideally. And, like two, and I think, I think that's like long-term the, yeah. the move. Um, but it'll be interesting to see like how that actually works in practice. Mm -hmm. um, I do think Rubio works best as a player when he's got somebody to play off of him. Mm -hmm. He's got somebody that can uh, that's ahead of him that he can advance possession to. I think he works really well in like that shadow striker role. And so I think long term you would think those two up top, maybe a guy like Acosta starts to kind of stabilize that midfield. Could be a max move long term. Um, but you definitely see, but I think you can two. justify two strikers because Absolutely. of how poor That's the winger, saying, yeah. because of how poor the play from the wingers has been. This yeah. Year. So why not just go two strikers, three uh, mid, right? Yeah. But yeah. I mean, do we have three midfielders? There's a the thing. That's right true. Yeah. There's the thing price. is we don't. Yeah. <laughs> it would be it would be what Acosta Warner K. Which, uh, that's that's a way to line that, up, but it's yeah. not something we've seen in the past, and I'm going to go yeah. ahead and say that's probably uh, not where Robin sees the, the best uh, use of the talent at hand. I do agree with that. Well, this weekend is actually a great time to kind of ponder this because we're not sure if Price is going to be featured. You have your first matchup with Portland since the playoff loss at home on Thanksgiving Day, that brutal 1-0 at the death loss uh, in the playoffs. And... You know, neither team has has come out of the gate too hot this year. 
Um, really at all. So it's not, doesn't have the same luster of a matchup, I would say, compared to last season. Uh, but a very important game for the Rapids, especially sure. with after this game, your next game starts a stretch of five games in 15 days. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a brutal, a brutal May. Yeah. Uh, so this is like it's three ball. points or bust. Am I wrong? Is that is that a little too dramatic? I, I felt think, like that last week. I feel like every uh, home Charlotte, every yeah. home game should honestly be three points or bust. Like sure. any time, like because with how difficult road matches and travel is in MLS, if you like you want to pick up every possible point you can at home, and the teams that that pick up points at home are the teams that end up hosting playoff games, yep. as we saw with the with the Rapids last season. I think the Rapids had the best home record, maybe I think in the entire league. Um, it was close. New England might have had I'd a have better to record, um, but at least they had the best home record in the Western Conference. And you know, the the more the Rapids keep dropping points at home, we saw this with you know against Salt Lake, uh, what four weeks ago, and yeah. against yeah uh, against Charlotte now. That keeps happening. Like those points add up over the season. And I've said it on the last three podcasts, I think. But points in April count the same as points in September. Sure, three Amen. points is three points, <laughs> right? And they have not been getting it very often. They haven't got it since their second and third game of the season. So, Jared, if you're looking at this eleven coming up, let's say Price isn't going. We'll say Lucas is healthy. We'll say Wilson is healthy, just for the sake of of building out this eleven. What's your ideal starting eleven for this Portland match, assuming that? Not just want three points, absolutely critically need three points. Who are you rolling out to get those three points? I, I think that's a very tough question and one I'm interested to see Robin's answer to. I'll give you my answer. Yeah, that's uh, what I want. Unfortunately, we're not running Robin's that out not on, tell on us, Saturday. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I think the back line almost sets itself. Assume Wilson out. Um, mm -hmm. So Viasia, Abubakar, uh, Trusty. Um, if Estevez is fit, I don't see any indication that he is or isn't again tight-lipped uh beta shower estevez on the left rosenberry on the right um two in the midfield with mac and warner i think that's the the answer we've seen so far um and then the three attackers which could very well be zardes in the middle uh rubio to the left and barrios to the right i think that's it for me I mean, that's the best we've got that 11 to me says more points than the rapids have the only the only thing I would I would probably change with that is that we, we were talking about earlier how so many of Portland's games this season they've lined up very defensive, um, just like a lot of nil nils. Um, so I wouldn't be, I, I I could hear an argument saying Acosta would be the better midfielder to pair with K, given that he. I uh, like supposedly offers a little bit more going forward, but you know then again we haven't seen you know, that much from him this season. Yeah. And if he hasn't done enough to earn a start, like what, eight weeks in, it's, it's concerning. I mean, it's yeah. concerning because you, you see a guy with that international resume, with the MLS experience, we're expecting uh, kind of big things out of a, a signing like that. Absolutely. If, especially when you a see lot. what we got out of Barrios last year. So I think a lot more starts than he has. He's yeah. <laughs> it's, it's concerning to see him not in the lineup this far, especially if he's healthy. I, I'm not sure if he's fully fit, but um, assuming he is, it's concerning at this point that we haven't seen more minutes from Acosta. I'd like to see it. Um, I think that he's a player. I was excited when we, we made the signing, and I think he's a player that has more in his kit bag than we've seen so far this year. 100%. But it's it's hard to say because we just haven't seen the minutes. Absolutely. Uh, is this, Joseph, uh, man, it's tough. To, it's tough to put this exactly in words, but is this, if they don't say they, to say they lose, say that home streak ends this sure. weekend, sure. right? 20 straight with a result. Um, more Am draws I hitting than the people panic want. button? Is that the question? <laughs> I mean, it is. It is because we talked about this last week uh, multiple times and saying it's time. Tell to me panic. where it hurts real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me where it hurts and we can go from there. It's that easy. Listen. I like okay so, so uh, for for those of you who've watched the best soccer show uh, which is like the U oh, US national team podcast yep. that Jason Davis does yep. um, they like to put things in terms of like the defcons right yes when you're at when you're at defcon 1 that's like fire the coach yep uh, like change everything right like sort of level defcon 2 is like you know you're you're seconds away sure from firing the coach and three is things are getting a little dicey yeah and i think we're right in the smack dab in the middle are right you feeling now. more orange or more yellow i on the i chart? would i feel like right as like the black line in between 
uh, the I think we're in the yellow right now the because you have been dropping those points, and I think orange is is. You need three points. You need because this stretch is about to be so brutal, and you're gonna have to probably alternate Rubio and Zardes through that stretch, or at least for some of them. One would imagine, right? And so all of a sudden, you're not gonna be putting out your ult your 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 best eleven every time, and you're you're dealing with some injuries going into that, right? Like this is your last true opportunity to nail home some three points, move up the table a little bit. Um, I don't know. I think it's it's close. It is close to being the point where I'm where I'm like, okay, you guys just n you need wins. But like you said, three points at the start of the year. Yep. Three points at the end of the year. They do count the same. So like, if they balance this, because there's so much time left, they have enough time to balance out sure. a poor run of form with a string of good wins. And this team is good enough Absolutely. to go on a long winning streak. And there's time left in the season for that to happen. Like we still haven't seen a road victory this year. Last year they did pick up. Quite a handful of them. Yeah. Um, so I mean, some road results, but not. Yeah. But it, I guess. But not a win. Not if, three if points. We get, if if we pick up like the road win, like some road wins that offset like the poor results at home, um, like I'll, I'll start to feel okay. Um, I'm not worried as much about the two losses on the road just because yeah. of how hard it is to win. It's not easy. Um, but the two draws definitely hurt. Like the draw against Salt Lake hurt. The draw against Charlotte hurts. The draw against Charlotte hurts especially because they didn't play particularly well um, in the offensive third. So I told Mitch this on the post game. Sure. I in this four or five uh, last four or five games where they haven't won a game, I thought that was the worst game they've actually played. Even they, I thought the Charlotte game was the worst. Do you guys agree? Or it disagree? was their best defense defensive performance against Charlotte. That's fair, but I think yeah. I, I think I would I actually agree with Yaya where there wasn't any. There the were Dallas stretches the of that Minnesota game. game where I was like, "Dude, these guys look like world. This is like a very good MLS team. They're cruising." And all of a sudden, you look up and it's three one, and it's like, sure. "How the hell did that happen?" Same thing against Dallas. They had probably their best forty five minutes they've had. End up giving up that rocket from forty yards, lose the game, right? And so, you know, me and Yaya have talked about this a lot. Do you look at the form? and say they're playing pretty well but not getting results or do you look at results and say what the hell where's the points I jared you where to, you line up you have on to that? blend the two you have to blend That's the true. two i mean sure. soccer's a game of results um, it is sometimes you play ugly and still win um we tend to play pretty and drop points at this <laughs> point so um where where does where does that fall i mean we are playing an attractive brand of soccer this is a, a nice team to watch um, but we have to figure out how to kind of gild the edge a little bit and and score goals. And we're we're underperforming XG, um, so the the nice play contributes to a, a healthy XG. But you've yeah. got to finish the chances. So um, it, it's a bit of a situation where you have to balance that out. We have to get a little more hard, and we to to say you know if we can balance this out with points on the road, this stretch will be fine. It's really tough to look at the schedule and kind of circle those games on the road where you're going to be able to take those points. We're going to have to. To me, kind of Minnesota the was one of the ones where you That's needed it. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I do think goals are coming, and we're going to talk about how Zardis factors into that here in a second. But first, we need to talk about the homies over at Ivaca TV. Uh, look, if you turned on that game and you're one of the half of Denver that doesn't have altitude, you couldn't turn on that game this weekend. You couldn't see the Viacia debut. You couldn't see the Zardis debut. You couldn't see any of these games we've been talking about because you don't have altitude. So what do you do? Avaca TV. They have all the Colorado teams right there, uh, including altitude sports. So you can watch your Rapids. You can watch your Nuggets. You They've can got watch altitude your sports. They have altitude sports. Dang. They also have AT&T Sportsnet for the Rockies heads out there. You can also catch some uh, Mammoth on altitude. You can get some Pios and some Rammies over on AT&T Sportsnet. Are the Denver Outlaws on Oh, ooh, that's a really good question. Ivaka, let us know. Can we watch the outlaws on you? I don't know that one. But I do know right that if you have Ivaka, <laughs> you can watch these teams. Service is now in Denver and Colorado Springs. It's less expensive, easy to watch, offers a superior picture. Um, and you get all your favorite Colorado teams. Go to ivaka.tv slash DNVR and then use the promo code. DNVR, you'll get ten dollars off your first three months. That's only fifteen dollars per month the first three months plus receiver. No contracts, no hidden fees, and you get to watch the Rapids. That's about the best selling point I can give you right there. Um, okay, let's talk goals. The Rapids need them. They made a move to get them. They haven't had them. Big picture, 
offense, you're putting in a piece like Zardis. We kind of touched on it a little bit. Ideally, who does he start with? How do you integrate some of these guys off the bench that haven't got a lot of playing time? How does Zardis factor into that? I like. I want to hear your prediction for how many goals. Like over under 10, where does Zardis fall? Uh, 10 was going to be my guess, so I would say a push. Okay. Um, but if I had to pick one or the other, I'd probably go over. Okay. Um, uh, I'll, I just, I'll say 9.5 to give then you. Then I will take the over. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I just don't know how willing Frazier is. Is he going to fit Zardis into what he does, or is he going to adjust what he does to fit Zardis and put Rubio Zardis up top, add a midfielder in, although we did talk about not I having think. that. Offensively, ceiling and floor, how are those affected with this move? And do you see it? Do you see goals come in soon? I think all you need to do last year is look at how they played with Baji. Yep. Uh, because Baji's kind of a poor man's artist. I think that's actually um, like a perfect comp, and it's kind of doesn't and, feel and disrespectful I mean that, necessarily. And I, know, but and I like, mean that yeah. in total respect to Baji, who's a player that I yeah. love and I think thrived under Frazier's system. And I was very disappointed when they didn't. Uh, when they didn't resign him this year, uh, but I think that's that's what you need to look to because, um, and and honestly, that part of the year last season was the time when when, or when Baji was with the team. That was when the Rapids were playing at their best. That yeah. was when they were picking up most of their points. Is down that final stretch. Um, so I think um, you look a, you, you look to how the Rapids lined up then, sort of starting with either Rubio or Baji or like Barrios and Baji and then bringing on like a pacey guy like Lewis or I mean if Barrios was on the bench bring Barrios on um, to run at defenders with not a lot of with with uh, you know minutes left to go um, I think that would be a good I think that would be the smart move right Jared what do you see formationally do you see are we talking in a month when when three of us sit down to talk more rapids? Are we like, oh man, those goals finally showed up? Are we are we talking about that? I think oh. so. I think so. I mean, this seems like a plug and play signing because we're we're a team that hits a lot of crosses. Uh, yeah, we 100%. just hit a ton of crosses to a bunch of very little guys. <laughs> um, as a little Short guy Kings, myself, baby. it's See really hard there. to get over six two six three defenders and, yeah. and head those balls home unless you're that size yourself. I think that's why we saw uh, success from Baji last year when he came in. He scored mm. goals. His goals per minute was extremely good at the end of last year. Um, and I do think Zardes is a better option than Baji. So um, I do think that we do come into those goals. I don't think we have to change much up. Um, what will be interesting is how you situate uh, the the Zardes and Rubio, or Zubio, if you will, combo onto the I field. Like do they play a striker together? Zarbio? Um, do, you play, do you play Rubio to the left? Do you play two strikers? Those are questions we're going to have to answer, but it seems, I mean, for me, there's not much um, gray area. Zardes improves us at the nine striker sure, position sure. that we've been crying out for, and he's a big guy that can finish crosses, so this should be a, a natural fit. And to touch on those crosses, I mean, I think if you're picking where of them positionally where have the Rapids been the strongest, you have to look at Lucas, Lucas and Keegan have just been unreal this season, right? They have been completely controlling those wings. Tons of great crosses. I think Keegan's playing his best of the season in the last few games. Should have had one uh, the match before. Went off the woodwork. Should have had another that flew over. That, um, that annual Keegan screamer is going to come soon. I yeah. just like I th like you know I, he gets one every year because like you you know when he lines up uh, to, uh, like on corners like sure. he lines up at the edge of the box, that ball like uh, gets cleared out to him and he just takes a crack at. It. I feel I like it's going to come soon. He because he's getting so close every game, um, and it's only a matter of time I think before yeah yeah one of those falls. My out. guy, yes. What? Where's your head at with these goals? Do you think they're coming? I know you're like the optimist. I love talking to about any of my teams because you will gas them up big time. But so I, <laughs> I think I mean that very. I mean that in a very no 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 dude. Uh, hey, way. I'm a homer all the way. I'm a I homer. Need and I don't gas. care. I need the gas. Dude, get his mother gasolina. <laughs> I, I got it for you any any time of the week, man. Um, I think they're gonna start coming in bunches real quick. Yeah, I really do think Rubio is like what fifth place in Golden Boot or something like that. Yeah, he's like, only two off the pace. Uh, Jared does look really cute, by the way. Aya, I think that's how you say her name, right? 
Aya, yes. Yeah, Aya. Aya. <laughs> you got very lucky. That jacket is so dope, dude. He, he graduated unreal. from a burgundy boy to a burgundy man real quick <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think they're going to start coming in bunches. I think the, the Rapids, how you guys are talking about the crosses, are going to start coming in. Too far it is. A bigger striker, a bigger target man. And I think Rubio is going to be assisting him in a lot of those as well. I just think they're both going to work off great off each other. Um, I'm a little scared to see how long Jack Price is going to be gone. That's going to affect it quite a bit. But, I again, I do trust a lot. I trust that they're going to be, be able to, uh, Keegan and Estevez are going to keep able to cross, and that Tar is going to knock some of those home. I, I like think like, the biggest thing I've been worried about just generally is that, like, last year, um, goals by committee was working um, at this stage of the season. Uh, we were seeing seeing players like Bassett get. I mean, you know, Bassett hit the post a bunch last year, but he also scored quite a handful of times. We saw, uh, you know, guys like Kellen Acosta get goals. We saw wingers like Barrios and and Lewis get goals. We saw Keegan Rosenberry get goals. Um, we even saw Sam Vines get a goal like really early in the season before. Sam, hey, um, yeah, yeah, and this guy, year, dude. outside of Rubio, the Rapids just haven't been clicking at all in front of net. No. And like that's like the big worry is that even if Zardes and Rubio average out to um like, you know, half a goal a game over the season, you know, if the Rapids are um Yeah, but that's then that's what you're you're only scoring one goal a game then. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. like we've seen that one goal isn't enough not even to close to win games. Yeah. Um like it wasn't enough against Salt Lake, it wasn't enough against Houston, it wasn't enough against Dallas. The committee that went scoring last year has has turned up this year just devoid of, of that goal scoring yeah. threat. We've yeah. seen um, a regression, unfortunately, um, in Shinyashiki, Ru- uh, not Rubio, oh, yeah, Barrios. Another one. Um, you know, Lewis hasn't had a good season. Um, these are players that we counted on very heavily last year, and they just haven't brought the goods back this season. So we we need that to kind of click into gear, and if it doesn't. We're we're gonna be in for a very tough season. So so you guys just kind of made something click in my head there with in terms of the offense. It was goals by committee and it was sort of working. But then they bring in Badgie and kind of the offense falls into place. Pick up a ton of points. End up with the one seed at the end. Is this is the Zardes move going to be last year's Badgie move a few months sooner into the season? Is that I mean is that ideally, I mean obviously like ideally that's what we I, I know ideally right like clearly that's that's an obvious <laughs> statement when yes. you say it like that but like. I mean, well, I guess we'll know this weekend because we'll see him play probably all close to 60, 70 minutes would be my guess this weekend. I would hope he gets the start, but I also wouldn't be surprised. I mean, just because historically, Frazier has, has always like taken his sweet time oh, with introducing God. new players. Don't do it this time, into Robin. The team. Come on, dog. I like, I mean, I, I, I think I think Zardes is good enough to justify like throwing Absolutely. out there immediately. Yep. Um, but I like I said, I mean, think of when... Um, when like Namley was coming back from his injury, think of when even when Baji first came in, Baji was on the bench for the first I don't know four weeks. Yeah, first month. Um, yep. Yeah, for, yeah, first. I think he he got one goal off the bench, um, but aside from that, he was mainly like it was mainly spot minutes in the last ten twenty. But I think him putting on Zardes with thirty minutes to go, putting that much trust in him. In his first ever game with less than 24 hours. Have you ever seen a player he, getting subbed in, stare at the iPad that much before? Uh, yeah, Ma- in? Max in Guatemala. <laughs> oh, okay. There yeah, you go. Max in but I was yeah, like, like, holy Max- crap. Like, this guy's a senior national team player. Yeah. This guy knows soccer, and they probably spent a legit seven minutes straight going over that game plan off to yeah. the side. I'd love to see what they showed him because it didn't work when he came <laughs> in. So maybe less time on the iPad, maybe a little more time oh just going God. out and playing soccer. We've got sure. a guy Let's who has MLS pedigree. He's got international pedigree. Yep. There's no reason to sit the guy on the bench. He's a plug-and-play player. Plug him in. We no- need to see him early. Listen, nothing will be as bad as the rapid starting Jack McBean hours <laughs> after meeting him on the tarmac uh, on the tarmac at uh, Boston. Where is he uh, now? Type play. of moment. Jack wow. McBean retired. I haven't yeah. thought about. That. I have not <laughs> thought about that name in a really long time. Okay, well, I want to flip the question now because we kind of touched on it. Is it time to panic? What happens if it's a two nil, three one, four one? Like the goals come in, we get three points. C thirty eight's going I'm crazy. Glad you clarified it was a win because I was really worried at first. <laughs> where were your where where will the vibes be going into that stretch? Are you like great, it's clicking, we're good to go, or are you still worried that give up more than one goal, it's over? 
they need a release game for sure. Yeah. They need a game where they can just like, where they like get all this like energy yeah. out, put tons of balls in the back of the net. They need one of those games. Do you see it coming? Know. A get right game would be excellent uh, against Portland. No, I, I don't yeah. see it coming necessarily because they do tend to keep games so low scoring. I think they will be tough to break down. Um, if we do get a win, uh, see, I can guarantee C38 will be flying again um, because the run of form two draws at home sucks but it's understandable to a degree uh the two losses compound the the woes of drop points we pick up three at home on saturday and and all is right in rapids world i think because we can all be optimistic about the fact we just signed zardes and now we've got our our win at home we haven't lost at home in a while um the opposite result is where i think things get a little bit um rorschach where uh, people who are inclined to be negative will have plenty of leeway to be negative, um, and and people that are excited and positive about the season will have a little bit harder time justifying that stance. Should we drop one at home here? Sure. So Portland, uh, two points ahead, worse goal differential than the Rapids. So you hope that that shines through in this game here, and maybe it's because they can't score. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so you hope. Okay, they can't score. Rapids we just added a score. guy that can score. I mean, it, it sounds like we're we're serving up a nil nil. Oh god. No, no yeah, yeah. Right? I think everyone over yeah, here thinks gas. it's going to be boring. Gas we up. Need gas. What's your prediction We're for this game? Over here. We need the yeah, yeah, gas on this game. If I got to predict this game, yeah. I'm going to go with a 2-0 victory for oh. the Rapids. Oh, see, that's Let's low. But see, that's low oh. for your oh. usual. Oh. So, like, the thing is, like, I, I he's am... predicted four goals three times this season. <laughs> no, I, I, predicted, <laughs> I predicted three goals three times, four oh, goals okay. twice. Okay, okay, okay. So, I so, like Rapids in the under. Let's parlay that and throw it on the hey, sheet. Hey, love no, that. I would and actually I would take, take Zardes goals. anytime goal scorer. I would do it. Yeah, he's going to be it. the most favored. He was actually yeah. the most favored on Saturday. That Having is insane. Having landed, had just got into town. That is already insane. better off than Rubio. So, uh, it, uh, Vegas sees him being a goal scorer for us, and I'd love to agree. So, I kind of rethought it. It, um, oh no! So oh no! I'm gonna go. Uh, he put the wrong type, nil, of, nil, he put the wrong type of gas in his tank. No. So I'm gonna go uh, four nil rapid to Jack Price doesn't play. But if he does beep, play, beep, it's beep, gonna beep. be ten nil. If Jack Price plays, it's ten nil. Ten nil. If Jack Price plays, it's ten nil. It's all relying on Jack so Price. You're, you're not. You're not confident at all that Jack Price is gonna play. Huh? No, I'm not. So it's a four nil <laughs> win. So I four nil. Do you think Zardes gets on the gets on the sheet? Zardes is gonna score all four of them. Oh my god! <laughs> what are you talking about? Let's go! You first. Yeah, yeah, with the gas. Oh man. Waters is spitting at his TV. Waters right is so mad. <laughs> you made Waters so. I say, I say this. Rubio and Zardes both get on. We get one of the defenders to put one in. Three one Rapids. Get right. That's get my right. prediction. Joseph, hit me. I think it's going to be a scrappy 1-0 victory. Scrappy 1-0 and who scores? Who scores? Um I think Z I think Zard is the obvious pick. I think what hasn't happened in a while is, is and I think I said this last time I was on the pod, <laughs> but it, it, it's been a long time since one of our defenders yeah. put in a set piece. I guess without Price that makes it hard. Mm, they still have guys. I mean, yeah, Price is obviously without Wilson it makes anything it hard. is a That's step true. down. I mean, anything like, is a step down from Price, but I don't think there's terrible options to send those in. I feel like I feel like it's about time we see a header, like a defensive header, go in the back of the net. So give me Austin, give me an Austin trusty one nil. Oh, Austin gets his first. I like it. Jared, what do you got? Uh, like I said, Rapids and under, so one or two nil okay. Rapids. Um, would love to see Mac get back on the board because yeah. we need that contribution from midfield. If, if we don't see Our more Maple goals King. from midfield, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I'm yeah. pretty uh, sure because we're putting a lot of weight on the on the Zubio duo. Absolutely. But would also love to see Zardes get his opener Zubio. as well. Are we committed to Zubio? I want to talk this out actually. Zubio, I, I, Zubio I, does sound better than Zarbio, although that does. What seem about Zardio? Like the, Zardio, hmm. Where's the Dio come from? Rudes Z isn't D enough. Comes from Zardio. D A. Oh, okay. Zardio, Zarbio, or Zarbio. Zubio. I like Zarbio. The chat, That's let us know what's up. If let's you, just if call them the co Golden Boot winners, and wow, then we'll just could go from there. Imagine? It's that easy. Like, <laughs> oh man, no, I, I couldn't imagine. I also would bet my. Uh, life <laughs> that it won't savings happen. that it yeah. won't happen. I agree with you. That. Don't have a mortgage to bet, okay. so you won't bet that okay. today. True. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's about that time. He has some questions for us, and we have some answers for him. Um, he's gonna Let's throw us to. Um, <laughs> he, he's gonna throw. Well, why don't you explain what you're gonna ask us here? 
And I'm just um, gonna ask you guys how pretty I am for like 30 minutes, and hopefully gorgeous. it comes out right. Get those racing stripes into the fade, and we're talking. Yeah. we're talking 10 out of 10. So I want to play a little game with you guys. I want to see would you believe it? I'm gonna throw a lot of questions out there, and I want to see if you guys would believe it. Okay. It's gonna be a kind of a futures thing. Sure. So yeah, see what what you guys are thinking for the Rapids in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without really telling me what you what you guys think. Love so, it. Would you believe it if I told you Diego Rubio was top three at the end of the season in scoring? Yeah. End of the season? Yeah. Yeah. He's only top two off three, the pace. Not Golden Boot, just top three. He's, he's two off the pace. I think, I do think eventually it goes to a two striker system. I He's playing his, maybe not his best, but close to it. I would, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't bet on it, but I wouldn't be shocked either. Nah, I, I I don't see it happening. I mean, I could see I could see top five. Okay, I could see top. Five. I don't like top three. It just seems like I I don't know. He'd have to put in a lot of goals. Like I mean, the golden boot race in MLS is always like dominated by you know your Rui Diaz's, your Chicharitos, your Velas. Sure, but right really now see? the goals list is not the names you would. That's true. Who is it? Right, it's, it's like, Drusy um, right now from Austin. Too. Right, he's at six. You have two at six. It's Drusy and Jimenez from Toronto. Okay. Um, Campana in Miami, Castellanos in NYC. You have a, you have one, two, three, four, five, six guys with five, two with six, okay. and then Rubio is in that pack with four, okay. which is there's a lot, but, right, two goal. Would you be? I mean, two goals and you're up. At, you're up at the top. So it's not like that's insane. And he's going to be playing the minutes. Jared, you have an answer. Would you believe that? I think the pace runs away from him a little bit. That's fair. Um, I, Juan had a comment on C38 podcast last week. Well, if we could only plug the 2022 Rubio into the 2021 Rapids, we would have been amazing. But I think, and this is what I told him, I think we had the 2022 Rubio in 2021. This has just been a particularly purple patch uh, sure. for a player who um, hasn't hasn't ever provided anywhere near a golden boot return. I think if we can get him to a dozen goals and he's in the top 10 in goal scoring, it's a very productive season i absolutely. don't see any reason why that should be a bad thing absolutely oh yeah i'd be happy like double digit goals Rubio. Yeah. i'd still like yeah i'd still love to see that but i think the pace runs closer to 24 fair. 26 yeah. fair fair yeah yeah what's our next one all right would you believe it if i told you max always only gets one more start from here to the end of june oh i would believe that in a heartbeat i would i would buy that based right on now. based on like i honestly like i see I see Max as a long-term play um, based on like how they view his potential and like, you know, where, where he, I like, they gave him a long contract. They're in no rush to like, obviously it'd be nice for him to like get out like to an amazing start, but I think they're ready to commit to him like over the long haul. And it's okay if he doesn't, uh, you know, get what like you know two three starts by look, the end of i'll admit i got lost in the sauce for sure you were I really thought, look, you were really he got into that in. video man we all he saw the techno driven <laughs> look, look, video. We look this team lacks sauce and max theoretically <laughs> was bringing the sauce <laughs> and it is sauceless out there sure. and i don't see it happening he just look there's so much that goes into positionally speaking communication I just don't see Frazier turning. If it gets dire, I don't see him being like Max is a salute. I think Max is when it's going well, you throw him in and it gets better. I don't know if he's the savior to a bad streak of games. I think you're right on that. And I would not be at all surprised to see him only get another start because the small sample size we've seen, um, he isn't getting those nods. No. So um, to think that nothing changes might not be too extreme. But we do have a heavy fixture list and yeah. he may, he five may and, benefit from five the fact and 15, that so. we've got a lot of minutes to play. You guys think he, if he puts that goal in the back of the net against, yes. um, was it Dallas? Yeah, it was Dallas. Do you think he would have had... Another like, do you think he would have started against either Minnesota or Charlotte? I think he would have started in that Shinyashiki spot, honestly. But if you're not going to finish game? it and you're out there, oh, you, sorry, in the Charlotte game at home. Charlotte, yeah. yeah, I do think if it start, if it is a start, it's a start at home. Maybe he gets to start in that cup match against Minnesota. Um, I don't know what kind of roster Frazier is going to throw out there, but I would say if there's if there is a start, I would pencil that one in. Is there more than one? It would have to be in that short stretch of games in the MLS play. The yeah, U.S. Open Cup would be a nice... I mean, we haven't won a trophy in a while. That's a serious 
national recognized trophy. And Absolutely. what's and what's interesting we about the Rapids and what's interesting about the Rapids now is that in previous times when they've been bounced from the Open Cup, they didn't have a strong like bench of like academy Secondary players unit. to like play. Um, it's always been guys who were borderline USL level, if that, like filling in at the backup roles. Like I, I, I think US Open Cup would be really great to see a guy like Seb Anderson get a full ninety minutes. Um, you get a guy, you get like Max, you get Max involved. You get um, maybe Yappy starts. Honestly, I'd like to see Ooh, like Yappy. Ooh, Yaya's anything. guy, dude. Um, but yeah, like honestly, I do think you're right that we that the Rapids do need to take it. Um, Pretty seriously, I guess it's hard. It's hard to say take it super seriously because super seriously means you're rolling out your starting away, eleven. Yeah, yeah, it means throwing away one of those MLS games that happens before or after in order to get your best guys on the field. And I just don't actually, I, I just don't see that happening. And I think it's, I think it is smarter to play save your best lineup. Fair for um, Fair. for like those matches. But I do think that the Rapids have a better like bench. Than yeah. they did in like the years when they went down to like New Mexico, United. And, oh God, um, I don't even want to think and about Nashville, it. Nashville SC, I think were the last. Right. Oklahoma <laughs> City Energy <laughs> a couple of years ago. I yeah, believe. Well, they did win that game, which yeah. is the last time the Rapids won a knockout match was when they played OKC okay. Energy there you in go. 2017. Was the last time the Rapids won any sort of knockout match. It's been a while, and That's the fact lot. that New Mexico brought such a strong crowd up to Dick's Sporting Goods yeah, was embarrassing. a couple years ago was embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But but be fit, that was right after Hudson got canned. Nobody it was, was really happy was with tough. how things were going on here. So. All right, yeah, yeah. What's our next? Would you believe? Would you believe it if I told you, uh, Robin Frazier was. Coach of the year. Oh, would I believe it? I, I wouldn't believe it just because I wouldn't believe that MLS, like media, would give it to him <laughs> even if he ha even if he went undefeated. I'll say this. I'll say this. He did. Yeah, so. I'll say this. I'll say this. If this team goes from where they're at now, which is only two wins in their first eight, to a home playoff game, it would be insane if he didn't finish top three. It would be insane. We we won the Western Conference right. last year and yeah. didn't right. it. So I mean, if you're not going to give it to him in a season where we have no DPS, we right. have sure. nothing in our favor, we have no national media attention yep. at all, and we somehow win the West and he's not in consideration. What makes us think that he's going to get it this year? I mean, we're if we if we started out, you know, Generally, at this point on about another dozen points, we might I be think talking about the other possibly, thing is I'm pretty sure media will like heavily criticize. The Champions League performance. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, as like that'll be like their justification. Even the Rapids like repeat as Western Conference champs. They'll give it to like, uh, they'll give it to Austin. like you know who, yeah. who's at the top of of e the East right now. Uh, it is Philly. 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 Yeah, yeah they'll give it to yeah. they'll give it to Curtin and say, oh look at how great Philly has been over I mean, the last six I don't, years. I, that's probably like, who I would give it to right now. Yeah, I mean, giving yeah, out the awards. Yeah, but if yeah. but if the Rapids like, if if the Rapids did come back and like win the West again, um, they would cite the Champions League performance and then give it to Curtin. And I don't, you know, I don't have the, the best history of knowing MLS awards and how they're given out. But generally speaking, in other sports, coach the year is almost always a year late because people go, because then you have the option to think about it, like, oh man, they really overachieved. And then if they're good again, it's like, oh yeah, that guy's really good. Look at the two seasons he's had. And it tends to be one of those awards that isn't necessarily always about just the results of that season. Yeah. If we finish on a lower point total than last season, which by all indications we probably yes. will because we yeah. set our, our team record last year, um, I just don't know how you award it to a guy yeah. the year after he has such an amazing season. Fair. It was just it doesn't doesn't ring true unless we go on some sort of ungodly run from here through the summer. We wouldn't believe it, yeah, yeah. What else you we got wouldn't for believe us? It. One quick question: Is that do you think he lost it yesterday because he wasn't good enough, or do you think he lost it because Bruce Arena had a all-time season with uh, Revolution? I mean, that's that's the reason though. Like people will give for their votes. Like, they just don't want to give the love to us, bro. Honestly, that's all it is. Rapids don't get the love. I we think don't we get lost the national the love. No, we lost to Joseph. <laughs> no. That's okay, Jared. That jacket, man, you look great. I appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, look, right now, if you're looking at it, at it, <laughs> Philly's at the top, probably unexpected. Orlando's in third, probably overperforming there. Austin's still in second. Uh, I think Minnesota in fifth. Like, there are some teams 
that are playing up like pretty dramatically compared to expectations. Meanwhile, Rapids coming off of a one seed having a two month stretch that is just for lack of a better term. <laughs> Very bad. Uh, you're, you're probably right in that no, you wouldn't be getting Joseph, talk to me like you love me. Run. Um, I love you. You're here. Uh, we got Joseph back. Joseph's back. We still don't think Robin Fraser is gonna get away. No, we yeah. still don't oh, no, no, dude, no, no, trust no, no, me. No. I don't think so either. Like, Listen, I'm not, I, like, there's I, too many other. There's too many other stories right now, especially if Austin stays up at the top. There's almost n- no way Fraser would be considered over stories like Philly and Austin, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, and I think, it, and I'm pretty sure they vote on it before the playoffs. It's also um, a narrative. I mean, it is go through. So of I mean, all of them, it's a narrative award. Yeah, so even if, yeah, yeah, straight up it is. Um, and I just don't see it happening for Frazier. Yeah. Do you want us to, do you, do you think we, we believe anything Dominic. else? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got, I got uh, a couple more. Okay. Right, They're kind of related. It. Let's start with the first one. Would you believe it if I told you the Rapids won the West? No. At this stage? Yeah, no. and I'm not talking about like I'm not talking they won they're the top of the conference. They won went, the West. They, they got went, the trophy. Oh, yeah. you mean as in they, they come went out to of the MLS Cup. Oh, yeah. What do yeah, you believe, believe it? That. This I mean they're ten points off the pace now, so regular season, no, they're not gonna win the West. No, but this this um, this team I mean, listen, I don't 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 write things off too uh, too early. I made the mistake, I think, six with six with six or seven games left to go last season, I made the mistake of saying, okay, the Rapids are playing for third or second in the West. There's okay. no way Seattle like goes on a six game losing streak and then they literally to end the did, season. So and enough. then they did. So, I mean, um, listen, I, I wouldn't write off like even a, uh, MLS is crazy, right? Like I wouldn't right. li- chaos. write off. It is the league of chaos. I wouldn't write off the Rapids finishing at the top of the West at the end of the year, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they listed, lifted the Western Conference trophy by winning the title, the conference title game. And that's because this team has the pieces to make a, to make a play. This team is better than the RSL team that made by a my, run to my. the Western Conference final last season. In my opinion, uh, Jared, and, and whoever Jared John Wick is, no, no LA Galaxy. Yeah, boo LA Galaxy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jared, to me, more than a regular season like slog of a team, this is one of those teams that is built for elimination games. Yeah, strong backline, great keeper, great at crossing, great at creating chances in front of the goal. Not great at finishing them so far, but is so. You think if they can make that tournament, maybe have a home game, maybe two, they could come out of the West. I think so. I think we're much better positioned to do so than we were last year. Um, Zardes is a, an extremely important piece. It's all going to come down to who's healthy at that time of year. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely, I, I believe that. I think we can come out of the West and, and represent the Western Conference. Love that. Um, I wish we could have done it last year. We just... Um, you, we came up against uh, any sort of adversity last year and didn't seem to rise to occasions. Yeah. Um, that's an MO that we've got to shake, and, yep. and we can shake that early in the playoffs. And if we can get through one game, I don't see any reason why we can't make it through three. So I think that's a really good point. Um, I, you know, it, it's all about making it. At this point, we have to get into the playoffs, and yep. at that point, we've got a ticket to the dance. Perfect. I think it's all about creating momentum, too. Yep. Like If they finish the season on like a three-game run of victories... Um, you got to like the chances in the Yeah, offense. exactly. Yep. Because yep. like we see it every year, the teams that finish with like crazy unbeaten runs, like except to finish for the, the season. Last year. Except, um, well, except but, <laughs> no, but that's the thing, right? Is that they didn't, they didn't finish on like a completely fair, fair, fair. flawless I know what you mean. stretch of games, right? Yeah. Like they still had that loss in New England. They had one other loss that I'm forgetting who it was against. Yeah. Um, and they had like a, a really – an annoying draw that I remember pissed me off, but fair enough. Um, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, you said you got one more for us. It's related. Would you believe it if I told you the Rapids did make the playoffs? Yes. Oh, I would believe it. Of course, I'd believe you. They have injuries mounting up. They haven't had the results they needed. Of course, I'd believe you. I don't want it to happen. I'm not going to bet on it. I do think there's going to be a, a healthy run of three points coming eventually. So I do think that pushes them far up enough the table that they will be playing postseason soccer. I'm going to say no. I don't believe you that the Rapids don't make the playoffs because I've built this team up uh, Fair enough. so much over yeah. the course of the last year. I think we're stronger <laughs> than we finished last season Absolutely. as far as the personnel available. Um, I don't think that there are seven better teams than us in the no. Western Conference. I don't think there's, we should be there. I don't think there's seven better teams, and I do agree that the Rapids should be there. But I think Mitch has a really good point about 
Like, what happens if, like, injuries mount up? If Jack Price, Estevez, and Wilson are out for two-thirds of the... Well, like Luke a is third featured, so... No, I know, yeah, but, like, yeah, yeah. But, but, but assuming... Sure, like, Let's yeah, say yeah, Estevez yeah, does yeah. get injured, and they, you know... Oh, like, God, let's, please don't. Let's We're say a team that's <laughs> prided ourselves on yeah, depth. On depth, yep. So, yep. If, no, you know, if, if injuries mount on league, us, it'll though, happen to all. so... In a capped league, you like if the Rapids get like five major injuries, I could totally believe. Totally believe. Could well, like, five major injuries. That, no, I, that does but that's my point. But that's why. I, that's why sure. I could believe it. Real yeah, quick, yeah. real quick, Jared. Can you tell me? Can you say that one more time? That you don't believe it. I don't believe it. I do not believe the Rapids missed the playoffs this year. I think we're too good. We're too deep. This? We've got the guys in line. There it is. I just nope. wanted the air horns in there that one, man. Throw it in. There it is. Look, you yeah, yeah. hit me with your hit me with your belief there. I know you asked the question, but we answered no, it as well. No, I don't believe it. I think the Rapids are going to make the playoff. I think they're going to have a home game. I think they're. Let's I really go. do believe that. Like I'm gas, full baby. on. Yeah, yeah, like, gas. I keep playing this. I really play this over and over yeah, again. Yeah, Selena, dude. One of our I other one of other uh, one of our coworkers, AJ Hayfley of the Avalanche Podcast, keep playing. Shout out. Show a te- when a team shows you who they are. Believe who they are. Yep. They show they're a good team. Yep. They've showed that they have a longer track record of being a good team than being a bad team. Fair. So I'm going to believe they're a good team until they have a longer track record of Fair being enough. a bad That's team true. than a good team. Fair enough. All right, guys. That is going to do it for this week's episode of the DNVR podcast. Joseph, go ahead and plug your stuff. Put, tell them where to find you. Uh, you can just find me on Twitter. I make dumb posts that you might find interesting. It's at JSPSAM. Oh my They're god! Really good post, dude. I love them. Hold on, really, really quick. Hold post. on, really quick. Occasionally good. This will be supposed to show a little bit longer, but I cannot believe we didn't talk about Owl Watch. Oh yeah, right. With like the most can, viral thing of the rapid season so far is Owl Watch. That's true. Uh, right up there with C thirty eight Little Drummer Boy. That's yeah, true. The Little two Boy, happened. I, I mean, if if we say it's a down game, well, it was good for uh, the cute socials. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, what'd you end up with? Like almost four hundred likes, tons of retweets, some national check marks chiming in. Yeah, like big every, deal. Every, everybody wanted to see the DNVR Slack the was talking a lot of owl talk for like an hour. Uh, <laughs> and, big time and, stuff. And shout there. out to shout out to like uh, Matt Pollard. And a few other people, I uh, believe. Me, who me. Had, no, 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 no. Who had previously been to matches? I don't want. I want to say three, four years ago. Oh, they were and there. And they saw owls in the rafters. Yeah, Matt was all. I over. just got lucky because I was the person who took a photo when I was the closest. Me and Matt <laughs> always sit. Uh, and Brandon Plone always sit right by where Omar, the communications director, watches the game from, and. Your tweet and like subsequent chatter online led to an actual official Rapids communications update to the media <laughs> about the Owl situation. For them. We got like an official answer. So I needed to shout out Owl Watch. Uh, Jared, go ahead and plug where, where they can find you and what they're doing. Yeah, the C38 podcast, Centennial 38 podcast on all your podcatchers. You can find me at Jared underscore Geisler on Twitter. Um, and yeah. Listen to the Centennial 38 podcast. Listen. We, uh, digging with Warners. Listen. It's Listen a really good Listen. pod. It's very good. <laughs> Warners doesn't doesn't go too hard on Rubio. No. If you All love you, Rubio, you'll love that podcast. <laughs> that is say. the Rubio if Lovers podcast. If you want somebody to give you the alternate view of Zardes is signing, <laughs> tune into Centennial oh, 38 man. podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Super producer. At yeah, here, yeah, yeah. G underscore Vasquez. Yeah, yeah. D- yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Yaya for fixing Make my sure. mic. Yeah, yeah, fix his mic. He fixed my mic. He is all over the place. He's the best. We super appreciate him. I'm your host, Mitchell Carroll at Mitch underscore underscore Carroll trying to get that check mark, baby. Had to make it look, had to make it proper. If you didn't have two uh, underscores, you might have got it already. Oh, that's a great point. Mitchell Carroll is like John Smith in Ireland. You're not fine. Like there's, you, you got to get tricky with it. Uh, go ahead and get your merch at the DNVR Locker. Put me to work. Make me send you a package of stuff. Subscribe to the DNVR.com. Uh, like and subscribe on our YouTube page. Follow us at DNVR Rapids. Let's go PIDs! Up, yeah, up let's go PIDs! Up the PIDs!